Good morning, everyone. My name's Angie. And I'm Albert. And we, along with our teammate Liam, who couldn't be here today, are representing the University of Pennsylvania as undergraduate students. So we are so excited today to be here and to share our recommendations for how Global Health Corps can optimize its application review process. So here's a brief overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. First, we're gonna give you a, a brief glance into GHC and its current review process. We'll then talk about GHC's goals and priorities, and then shift into our own research objectives and how these line up with the organization's priorities. We'll then propose our recommendations, and let me talk a bit about GHC's mission. So GHC is focused on empowering young leaders to promote health equity around the globe. But we believe that in order for GHC to promote health equity, there also needs to be equity in the application review process. So we've been tasked by GHC to investigate whether there is indeed equity in the current process. Just to give an overview of what the current process looks like, there's five rounds. So round one is an initial screening round. Round two is where semifinalists are selected. Round three is where the semifinalists are, are confirmed. In round four, GHC conducts interviews. And in round five, the partner organizations that GHC works with select their favorite candidates. For the sake of our analysis and our recommendation, we'll be focusing on rounds two and round three. So in round two, past GHC fellows review candidates based on a system of rating and ranking. And in round three, these reviews are reconciled and round three makes a final call on who is actually going to be a semifinalist. GHC has several goals and priorities when it comes to the process, but the one we'll be focusing on is whether the process is clear fair and consistent. And to figure out whether this actually is the case, we've proposed the, the following research questions, which were adapted from the research questions that were given to us by GHC. And some of the things we looked at were, for example, bias in rounds two and three, and also using round five as our best proxy of true candidate quality, comparing round five to the previous two rounds. So to answer these questions, we primarily use SQL and R to first transform the data, and then analyze and iterate it based on our findings. So based on our analyses, we'd like to propose a bifurcated strategy in which we wish to reduce biases and simplify the process. Let me start first by talking about making the process more fair and consistent through reducing biases. And in this, we'll examine both citizenship bias and gender bias. Starting first with citizenship bias. We found that if you're an applicant and you share the same citizenship as your reviewer, you're 36% more likely to become a semifinalist according to your round two reviewer. And if you don't, then too bad for you. And we didn't find this in round three, but we believe that its presence in round two is indicative of citizenship bias in the review process. And intuitively, this makes sense. If you consider the research on homophily, which suggests that the more similar you are to someone, the more you like them, and thus you're, you're gonna be able to view them more favorably, this makes sense. But the problem of bias still exists. So we believe that to mitigate this bias, GHC should introduce a blind review process in which name and citizenship are both hidden. Moreover, we found that reviewers who share the same citizenship tend to have similar perspectives on their candidates. So what this means is that if you have two reviewers from the United States, they seem to have similar opinions on how they perceive the candidate that they're reviewing. This is problematic for a couple reasons. First, it exaggerates the bias that we identified in the previous slide. And more importantly, it shows that there's not much diversity in information being brought in to this round. So in order to expand diversity of opinion and thus hopefully boost the, the, the quality of decision making because of this increased information, we suggest that when possible, GHC assigns reviewers who have different citizenships to review each candidate. Let's move on now to gender. So we found that females are 21% more likely than males are to receive semifinalist status in round two. So this is on the surface indicative of GHC's kind of anti-bias training not really being that effective, but it's also interesting in that it's kind of counterintuitive to what we usually observe, which is that females are discriminated against. So we found this to be very puzzling and we dug further into why exactly this is happening. 
Further analysis shows that this bias is driven by higher acceptance rates for females, but only for traditionally female roles. So as you can see on the table on the left, the interaction term of being female and, being, and applying for a stereotypically female role, um, that's significant, and it draws significance away from merely being female. And the way we determine whether a role is traditionally male or female is by using data from the US Department of Labor and creating these mappings as you see on the right. So not only is there gender bias, but this bias is driven by stereotypes about gender and occupation that may be detrimental to the progression of women in certain fields. Thus, this further uh, makes concrete our recommendation that there should be a blind review process in which name and gender are hidden. Now I'm gonna hand it off to my teammate Albert who will talk about the latter half of our recommendations. Thank you, Angie. So in the second half of recommendations, we want to recommend how we can make the process more clear. And the main way we do this is by simplifying the process, uh, but maybe not too much. And we'll talk about the rating dimensions as well as the review stages. So for remute dimensions, we found that there appears to be some redundant information going on. As you can see by the correlation table as well as by the VIF table, there's collinearity between the ratings that are being used. And this makes sense, right? A reviewer, if you have to use like eight different ratings, you're gonna say like, oh, this candidate's generally good. I'm just gonna give them all like four out of four or three out of four. Versus if someone's not as good, you might just say like, they just get a lot of ones. Um, so, but this is creating extra work for reviewers and it's making the ratings less useful than they could be. So it's showing that there's potential to streamline the process here. We did a further analysis on ratings following this, and our idea here was that ratings should be an intrinsic measure of a candidate's quality, um, as opposed to rankings, where they're being ranked from one to 10 against other people. And in theory, it should be able to carry on to round five, which is the last round where you find out if you are selected for a position. Um, so what we found is that experience and the round two ranking were the only two that were significant to moderately significant in um, showing how well you do in round five. Um, so this is showing, you know, there are flaws with the rating system, but we don't recommend removing it completely. And that's because we did find experience w was pretty useful in, in both, and it does seem to be less correlated to the other ratings. And we also think that ratings does help make your ranking. It, it is nice to have like some numbers to help you rank candidates. Um, so our recommendation here is to continue to use experience and then iterate on uh, one or two or three other ratings that GHC deems especially important. Our next recommendation is taking a step back and thinking about where not to oversimplify the process. And this is with round two and round three. Um, we found that they play distinct roles in the selection process. Round two, it's, it's an area where the two reviewers in round two can disagree with each other, bring in different information, and ultimately, generally when you have distinct information and diversity of opinion, you're gonna have better decisions as your outcome. And we found that um, for those candidates who ultimately got an interview after round three, 48% of them only had one reviewer in round two saying they should get uh, an interview. So there is a healthy amount of disagreement here. But with disagreement, you also need someone doing a reconciliation, and that's where round three is playing this role. And we see this by, by saying that, so, so for those people who, if you only got one approval in round two, if there was disagreement, 50% of those candidates were screened out. So there's a lot of screening out to do after this disagreement stage. So taking a step back, uh, it's very easy when you're doing a data science project in general to say, I'm just gonna create a predictive algorithm. I'm just gonna like, let it tell me, oh, let's just interview this candidate by, based on reading their application through this machine. We recommend against this because anytime you have an algorithm that becomes super complex, it inherently also becomes, uh, it becomes more like a black box and harder to understand. And this makes it hard to tell, like, is GHC actually going to be able to follow the, their guidelines of being clear and fair if it's harder to understand? So this is why we created our recommendations and we hope that with these recommendations, GHC can make their process more fair, clear, and consistent and have more selection equity, ultimately leading to more health equity in the world. Thank you. <laughs>